on the five. He'd played such brilliant pool throughout the Moscone Cup, and to end that way seems cruel somehow. It just goes to show that even the very best can miss the simplest of pots. If USA lose, and it's a big if still, that will be one that haunts them until next year. Absolutely, Phil. 4-1 was a big difference, wasn't it? And, and David Arcady hadn't been playing until that turnaround in the match. Let's put it this way. Mathematically, if Jason Shaw wins this match, the USA could still win overall. But I think, realistically, their chances would be ebbing away. So once more, massive responsibility on the wide shoulders of Shane Van Boning. But if you're going to put it on anyone's shoulders, this is the guy. He doesn't do much wrong, does he? He's won over 100 professional titles. Every accolade in the book. I think this is the guy who elevates the spirit of Team USA. Well, as SVB and Scarlett Woodward go, so do the USA. Seeing Jason Shaw's face coming out, he was very determined to win this point. But you can't, you can only do so much. If you can't get to the table, you can't win the points. And Shane Van Poning has come out firing. Uh oh. Can he get through there? like he can. When it comes to modern pool, few could possibly rival Shane Van Boning. He leads Jason Shaw in this clash of giants, this clash of titans. 1-0. This is the, the winning nine ball down the rail. I was mentioning this earlier in the cup, Alison, that when it comes to putting down rails, I don't think I've ever seen anyone more dependable and reliable than the man from South Dakota. I agree with you. I've actually partnered him in a doubles match um, a little while ago, and most incredible the shots that he comes with down the rail. I thought the same thing. It's obviously technique, but I think when you're good at a particular aspect of the game, it's also about alignment. Sometimes players just get into that groove where they know what to do. And with his technique, his experience, and that alignment, he is on the button. You know, in 2020, when we were behind closed doors due to the COVID-19 pandemic at the Rico Arena in Coventry, Europe won very easily. It was all over, basically, when these two met 
in what turned out to be the final singles. Jason Shaw beat Shane Van Boning 5-3. And of course, last year, Van Boning was out there and lost the final singles when Europe won again. So he wants to leave this year's Moscone Cup because this could be his last involvement, depending on whether we go the full distance. He wants to leave individually with a, with a glow. Oh, that was a nice break from Jason Shaw there. That's probably one of the best breaks that I've seen in the whole tournament. The way the balls have spread, and it looks so easy, made that look so easy. I don't see problems in this rack. Hadn't been the best of weeks for Jason Shaw until the singles last night when he beat Oscar Dominguez 5-2. At 2-2 he wasn't particularly impressive, but then he really turned on the, the turbo charge. Well, he's a vice captain of the team and there comes a lot of pressure with that. He usually, you know, he likes to carry the team a little bit and... Uh, He's been a little out of sorts the first couple of days. Seemed a bit rattled with the crowd, a little frustrated. And uh, it took the singles match to turn that around and to change everything. It's not easy when you're playing doubles and teams. Yeah. <laughs> oh, talking back to the crowd. Yeah, he's a big fish, is Jason Shaw, but he doesn't want to take the bait. And the big fish almost hooked himself. <laughs> yes, he did. I thought he, I thought that was going to be close there. terms you know when it comes to Q sports we always love to see drama but we also like to see quality and the first two racks were most certainly that I was gonna draw back on the, 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 five, the five ball I was gonna draw back more and I'm like just you know that way sometimes you know, when you got yourself on yeah, the grill, yeah, I'll say that make all I'm thinking to myself was don't fucking Apologies there if you heard any language, obviously in the heat of the moment. Jason forgot about the microphones. And there's heat in every moment until the final ball spotted. This is still very much on a knife edge. As we said, if Shaw can get this oh so vital point, it will be extremely difficult for the USA to dig themselves out of a really deep hole. But if they can win this, if Shane Van Boning can deliver, trailing only 9-8, then it's wide open. I know it's been a very, very exciting Moscone Cup. It's been quite a few years since it's been this close in the last day. You want to pot balls on the break, it's essential at this level. The one ball you don't want to pot is Whitey. So the one ball is nestled up against the purple five ball there, leaving Jason a good opportunity to get Shane in trouble. Oh, 
or does it go wide? Does, can he make that shot into the corner pocket? I think he's going to play a good safety here and get Shane in trouble. It did go. And he kept manoeuvring the cue ball around further and further to find his angle. Just squeezed it into the pocket there. Now look at the end of this shot as well. The cue ball just bouncing off the cushion enough to leave some angle on the two, which makes his life easier. We keep saying they should clear it up from here. We are discounting the pressure, but under normal circumstances, you would heavily favour him to do so. I'm not feeling like he's under pressure right now. I don't think he's feeling it. I think he's revved up. You know, he's <clears throat> he's played this tournament many times, been the MVP in the past, and this is his role, isn't it? I think he struggled the first couple of days. Yesterday finished on a high, and today he's coming out the same way. Commentator's curse. Alison, what have you done to him? <laughs> Well, you know I've been 27 years in America, 27 years in England. Maybe I'm a little partial. Very unexpected from Jason there. But we've seen, a, you know, lots of drama in this event, haven't we? Balls missed or hooking themselves, and that's what adds to the excitement of it. And not many break and runs, right, Phil? Absolutely, in very short supply, and that was the miss from Shaw. You know, to make any Moscone Cup team, you've got to be a terrific player, but anyone can miss. In these circumstances, anyone, at any time. It's a huge mental game. I don't think, you know, they're, they're all great players here. They're all champions. They've won numerous tournaments between them all. Every, like you said, everyone makes mistakes. And mentally, it's how you get over it. How, you, how do you deal with that? Just clearing the nine ball, a few people were a little concerned as the, the white went back down the table there, but it's a okay. Beautiful speed control from Shane there. Beautiful view of the arena there from different perspective yeah it's the largest crowd in Moscone Cup history assembled here at Bally's Resort Casino the vast majority want the USA to prevail that helped we'll be back with more Moscone Cup pool in just a moment
What an atmosphere here at Bally's Resort and Casino on the Las Vegas Strip. It is the final day of the Moscone Cup and the destination of that prize silverware is still very much hanging in the balance. Another break from Jason Shaw, still at the table, made a ball. And the rack is open. He's looking at forcing the cue ball round, making the, the one ball in the corner and going two to three rails around. Possibly kissing into the three ball there to hold for the blue two ball into the corner pocket. Got a little bit of an angle here. He can run forward two rails with spin, or he can draw the ball back. Just caught it a little bit thick there. He tried to come around the back a little bit closer to the three ball. After the missed four in the previous rack, some players' confidence might be not. Sean's not that sort, is he? He can shake things off. No, he's very carefree when he plays. He usually rises to the occasion of the crowd too. He doesn't mind if everyone's booing him in the audience. He rises to the occasion and loves it. He says he has the attitude of a fighter going into the ring. Shocking. For Jason Shaw, the pink stinks. <laughs> yeah, but he's look, he's got away with this shot. He missed that ball. Which he wasn't supposed to miss, and look where Shane is. Snookered. Behind the seven ball. And after missing a ball like that, you don't deserve good fortune. But he's received them. That's the game of pool for you. There's always that element of luck involved. And is the, I can't remember if the referee was said, is, is the pink ball frozen on the rail or not? I didn't hear. If it is, and he makes contact with the pink ball, one of the balls has to hit another rail. Tough shot to hit right? in these conditions. Not in the same zip code, though, was he? Nowhere near. Yeah, he had him looked well behind that seven ball. And the cloth is very slippery and slidey, and it's a little tricky to negotiate. What do we have here? Another turn up for the books. Absolutely shocked at that shot too, but it all adds to the drama here, Phil, doesn't it? As millions down the years will tell you, you cannot keep riding your luck in Las Vegas. Eventually, it will turn. Was a great shot by Jason Shaw, one of the best jumpers in the game. Absolutely incredible talent that this guy has. not called eagle eye for nothing. Indiana Jones would have been proud of that rack. It was full of adventure. 
thrills and spills, but in the end, thanks to a hefty slot of good fortune, Jason Shaw equalizes at 2-2. By the way, next up, it is Joshua Filler. with Joshua Filler. Josh, what a point by David Alcade there. Massive point for Europe. Yeah, I mean, uh, he just played amazing. Uh, luckily, Skyler made some mistakes. And then uh, David came with great shots and, wow, it was just amazing. You've got your cue. You're having a practice because you're up next. You have potted the winning nine ball before. You know how it feels. Jason's on now. It could be you. It could be again, pal. Yeah, but, you know... I'm not really thinking about that. I just want to give everything for the team. And if you win in the end, if I make the winning nine or somebody else, it doesn't really, I don't really care about that. We just want to win and uh, enjoy the winning in the end. I've been out there. It is so loud. The pressure is ramped up. You live for this, don't you? Yeah, I mean, yesterday, for example, when I played with Jason and didn't really get going. But uh, I, I really enjoy it. I love that the crowd is going so like loud. Uh, I really love that because when we're in Ale Alexandra Palace, they, the Americans have the same issue with our fans, but it's just great and uh, I'm enjoying every single moment out there. How would it feel to win the cup and pot the winning nine ball? As I said earlier, um, I mean, of course, it's amazing. It's one of the best feelings ever in your life and career and I have the chance to maybe do it again would be great, but I'm not focusing on, you know, uh, winning, uh, putting this uh, winning nine ball. I'm just focusing on my game and try to win my match. OK, Josh, best of luck. Thank you. Yeah, just confirmation. Joshua Filler's opponent next up will be Tyler Steyer. The man from Wisconsin. Filler, on paper, is the favourite, but Steyer is a real trier who always seems to produce his best pool in this environment. break Allison and he got his just desserts although the five going next to the four wasn't in the plan no that complicates the rack there. unlike Jason's couple of breaks where it's running pretty open that last little roll there still it's how he leaves himself on the two on the blue two, where he can break, possibly break those balls up. Oh, that's a shock. Surprise for the books there. Didn't expect that. Isn't it just? Yeah, a slightly complex positional shot, but so. Yeah, not really for his caliber. But luckily he didn't leave Jason an open shot there. Now, had the cue ball stopped directly between the brown seven and the green six, Van Boning could have been in all sorts of trouble here. Yeah, I believe uh, he can get through there. Or if not, he'll just put a little bit of curve on the ball. But it's about controlling the ball, isn't it? And not giving your opponent a shot. Now, that's a good shot if it doesn't bounce too much. That's a good shot. He's given Jason a little chance here if Jason chooses to go for it. As I said earlier, his nickname's Eagle Eye and he's so good at these thin cuts. Also looking at possibly breaking into the Four and five ball there. Yeah. Look at that, he did just that. Where's that cue ball going, Phil? Can you believe that? Well, after the luck he had in the previous rack when he missed the four and flew to snooker, I suppose it's par for the course. Incredible. Oh, 
Where's that cue ball going? This is just unbelievable, isn't it? I can't believe this. You've got away with that. Can I just leave you for a moment? I just want to pop down there and ask Jason what the lottery numbers are. <laughs> Can you share that with me too, please? Absolutely unbelievable how the luck is turning here. Oh, but Van Boning finds an answer. The jump. Tough shot here. Shane's going to go for this in the corner pocket, right in corner pocket, and bump into the balls on the side. Oh, and he's just hung it up. I can't believe it. And you see the tightness of these pockets compound the error because quite often the ball is trapped in them and he's left right over the bag for the next guy. Didn't want to be that close to the rail. Shouldn't pose a problem, but just adds a little bit of heat on him. Tensions are high here. Oh my God. This is, this is the tension, honestly. This is what the Moscone Cup does to people. And this is one of the game's premier potters. He absolutely misjudged that, mishit it, whatever you like. He was nowhere near. That's one of the worst shots I've ever seen him play. I agree with you. Can't believe it. Again, he hasn't left Shane something easy here. It looks easier than it is. But they're both suffering from some nerves. This is... Final day, lot at stake. And now Shane's had a little bit of run of the balls. Well, you can't begrudge him, can you? No, absolutely not. I mean, it's not a, not a hard kick, but it's what you leave. And that was quite a tentative safety. Yeah, he didn't quite get the pace right there. It's definitely an opportunity for Shane. A snooker there. Jason has a chance. Is he going to go for that cut? Seems like a natural to get back for the six ball. Now that is more like it from Jason Shorey. Let the cue on go. Play that one with freedom. huge rack this is for both players. I can confidently tell you he will not miss this. <laughs> Jason prevails. Shaw hits the front in the match for the first time. He was 1-0 and 2-1 down. Now, though, he's 3-2 ahead in front, but not flawless by any means. You know, John Spencer, three times world snooker champion in the 70s, he always used to say that in snooker, it was more interesting when people were missing balls. It was more exciting. And that applies here. That last track was simply extraordinary because you've got two giants of the game who were completely rendered nervy and liable to error because of the situation. I think it's important that people see that side of it. Definitely makes it more interesting because the pressure 
But this tournament is incredible. There's a lot of money at stake. There's $15,000 difference to each player playing in it. And obviously the prestige of winning the Moscone Cup. Yeah, this is what this tension can do. The mistakes in Rack 5 had to be seen to be believed. That was very, very fortunate, obviously. But some of the pots that were missed, they were eye-popping. Back to business here. <laughs> and Jason loses the cue ball into the pocket. Chains back at the table. Yeah, and back at an open table. I think it's what they call incident filled, this. any problems here but you never know from what we've seen in the last couple of racks it's been so wonderful watching Shane in this event having been his hundredth appearance in the Moscone Cup and a partner in Earl Strickland to win a point it's been history making hasn't it Phil yeah, sometimes Shane Van Boning hasn't had good Moscone Cups. He's performed well below his best, but here he's given everything and then some. Definitely one of the most hard-working players out there. And with that, one of the most experienced with all of his successes. Cue ball on a little bit there. He played the cue ball with right hand English to check it up, but I think he called it a little bit on the thin side and left himself a little bit more of a cut than he wanted. Oh, you know what happened there? He got a kick. Did you watch the did you watch the six ball slow down? He got a bad contact on the six ball. Let's watch that again. We call it a kick. Here they call it a skip. Yes. Always goes thick. That's so unlucky. I haven't seen that in this cup until now. That was such an unfortunate time for that to happen. And consequently, Jason is asking for referee John Lehman to clean the cue ball. In snooker, there's a new chalk out from Finland which is largely eradicated kicks and indeed bad bounces off the cushions. As you say, Alison, we've not seen many here, if any, but what a time for one to crop up. Couldn't have been worse for Shane. Even the young ones are feeling the tension. That young man is from Glasgow. I met him the other day. He's a big Jason Shaw fan. He'll be loving this. And the whole of Europe will be as well. Yeah, cheer for all you want, young man. Jason is on the hill at 4-2. All because of that skid. What a time to occur. You have to say, J Jason Shaw, yeah, he's holding up. But in this match, certain things have been cruel for Shane Van Boning. You have to say that in a spirit of fairness. The twists and turns, just at the wrong time for Team USA. I think that sort of momentum got lost a little bit in the Skylar Woodward match, didn't it? Because I was uh, expecting, actually, the USA to win the first three points today. Now, you see the shot here. There you go. From the angle we've just shown you it's quite obvious that there was an abnormal contact there and when you have a kick or a skid depending on your preferred terminology 
They always go thick, and it deprived Shane Van Boning of that six ball. Just caught, just caught Shane shaking his head there. Just made that nearly scratched in the corner pocket with the cue ball there. He's looking a little bit dejected, isn't he, Phil? Well, you shouldn't do. Everyone says, oh, you can keep your head up and all that, but it's so easy to dwell when you've had such a, a horrible run. Caught that too thick there. He wanted to catch that two ball thinner, and let the cue ball run down table and keep the two ball on that end rail. So here's a chance for Jason Shaw to finish this match. Wow, oh, I missed. That's a little turn up for the books there. Shane's just got to hold himself together and take it ball by ball. It's all you can do at this stage of the game. Look at the pot success rate in this match. Normally, we expected the very worst mid 90s to dip below 90%. That's really unusual. past is the past. You've got to stay in the present moment. That's yeah, he's not so happy now, is he? <laughs> That's actually Jason's nephew. And it's so nice to see some of the young players in the audience. We've got plenty of juniors in the US in the audience and obviously Jason's nephew, I'm sure he plays too, because his sister owns a pool in, in Glasgow. Yeah, McGoldricks. What a handsome young fella he is. Just teasing a little bit there. Making it exciting. I'm sure when Van Boning left the two ball, he feared the worst. Naturally, you would. This has been such a strange match, hasn't it? Well, the first two racks were brilliant, and then all of a sudden, there was a sea of mistakes. But no mistake from Van Boning on this dish up. He keeps the contest alive. Jeremy Jones, former US Open champion, US captain walking into the arena to provide emotional and team support as this crowd are re-energized. Woodward out there, revving the audience up, trying to get them behind Shane. Of course, Van Boning knows he's not out of the woods yet because with the alternate break format, Shaw breaks off in rack eight. If it goes Hill Hill though, then it's Van Boning who has the, the advantage.
two absolute giants of the game. They win so many individual titles now, though. It's all about the team, the cause, the cup. Well, the five is in. Shaw looking Saw around that. the table. Trying to look calm, Alison, but inside he must be so under it. No doubt about it. This is uh, a lot closer than expected this year. On paper, Europe were clear favourites. But America have made a real fight out of it. It's a nice break from Jason. Nice shot on the one ball. The obvious concern would be the close proximity of the pink four and the green six. I think he's fine now. Crept in the pocket there. Obviously that three passes by the pink four. And I think it should be over from there. If he wins this match, Alison, there is a possibility for the third consecutive year, Jason Shaw could be the most valuable player, the MVP. I was not thinking about that. I spoke to him earlier on. We were talking about it. He said, I couldn't care less as long as Europe lift the cup again. It really is all about that. I don't think they worry about the MVP. It's, that's just a nice bonus. But you wouldn't have thought it the way the first two days went, did you? It's just that he's picked up his play in the last two days. Like yesterday was a big point at the end of the day, and this will be a massive point. We've been at certain tournaments this year where he's had a terrible run. World Cup of Paul. World Masters also. Nothing went right for him. Things have gone right for him in this match, though. And that is impeccable timing. Extension. Taking his extension, just giving himself some breathing room. Come on! The mind's in. Jason Shaw's biggest fan and smallest fan is absolutely delighted. So is Team Europe. Shane Van Boning, the world. Has been downed. Jason Shaw wins that vital singles 5 3. And now Europe need just one more victory to be Moscone Cup champions yet again.